I'm going to explain to you today how AI companies are lying to us. I'm going to also try and explain why, but that's kind of more up to my interpretation. I I'm going to talk about a few different ways that they're lying to us, in my opinion. Again, it's kind of, this is kind of my opinion, but I have seen a lot of people saying the same things that I'm going to be talking about in this video, and I'm going to try and give some motivations behind it. I'm going to try and give my unique perspective on this topic. So there are a couple of different ways that AI companies are lying to us. The first one are these blog posts that they release. Here's an example of Anthropics, and you always see these benchmarks, right? We've all seen them a million times. Let's just have a look. Benchmark, oh, these blogs are basically copied from each other. Like This is actually kind of funny the way that they do it. And what I want to talk about, first of all, is benchmarks. Now, this isn't only me saying this. This is pretty much common knowledge. You can train a model to specifically be better at passing benchmark questions. Now, obviously, there is still the intelligence or intelligence or, you know, parameters or whatever you want to call it. That is also important as well. But you can kind of see how if you just train or fine tune the model to specifically be good at, you know, for example, MMLU, uh, IF eval, human eval, all these stuff. If you purposefully train it to be good at these, then you can then claim that, you know, Meta 3.1 is better than Claw 3.5 Sonnet because you technically have the maths in front of you. You technically have the maths and the data and the proof. But you can actually tell by testing these models that 3.5 Sonnet is still more intelligent than Llama, okay? Now, this is, again, this is my interpretation of things. I've used these models. I've tested these models. I've put these models in my systems, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the most interesting things is that, you know, Llama is claiming now that it's uh, slightly above 3.5 Sonnet in some of these tests. You can see here IF eval 88.6 to 88, 96.8 to 96.4. Like they're very, very, very slight increases on model 3.5, on Claw 3.5 Sonnet. But if you actually test them, then you might see something different. So let's use one of my tests that I always use, which is the uh, choosing prompt. I will have to delete some of this because Hugging Face doesn't actually allow for a lot of um, model uh, context uh, token input. So we'll do this here with, and we'll make sure this is uh, 3.1405 instruct. If you want to test the new uh, Llama model, you can test it here on huggingface.co slash chat. So this is actually still too long, which is kind of annoying. Let's just delete a little bit more, but not too much. So we'll delete this and then we'll send this again. Okay, that's no longer too long. We're gonna do the same thing with Sonnet and we're gonna do the same thing with ChatGPT 4.0 Mini. This is still too long for ChatGPT 4.0 Mini, perfect. Surely don't have to delete that much. And of course, the one that, um, allows for the largest token limit is, of course, or token input limit is Claude Sonic 3.5. This is a black cotton polo, so I'll I'll give it that because it's black. And yeah, it does a pretty good job, so, uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Uh, Llama hasn't even started yet. <laughs> and ChatGBT, we've got a gray suit. Um, how did he get two images there? That's interesting. A blue suit, a black gilet. Uh, th these are both fine. You could wear these three. Um, you could probably wear this as a coat. You probably wouldn't know. And then, and yeah, no, not, it hasn't done a very good job there. And Llama hasn't even started yet. <laughs> yeah. Model is overloaded. Perfect. I did this test before this video, and I will say the Sonnet still performed best on this test. This is obviously one test of many that you would do to see the power of a model. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is another thing that AI companies seem to be doing, which is they release a model they get people to use it, and Claude have been pretty guilty of this, and also ChatGPT have been pretty guilty of this. And then after two to three weeks, they dumb the model down, probably to save on power or cost or whatever it might be. So this is really, really frustrating, especially as a developer or someone who is creating a SaaS or whatever. You've gone from super intelligent to 
kind of intelligent in two to three weeks. And when you're building an entire system around that, that starts to get a little bit worrying. So Harbor is actually not performing as well on some of its tasks. There are about 15 tasks in total within Harbor um, when compared to two to three weeks ago. This is just me spitballing. This is just my opinion. This is just what I'm witnessing. I've got no proof of any of this. And I'm sure someone will tell me that this isn't correct or whatever, but in my experience, they dumb models down a few weeks after release, after the hype, after, you know, 100,000 people start using Claude instead of ChatGPT. It's happened with ChatGPT as well. It's not just uh, Anthropic that are doing this. It's OpenAI as well. I don't want to just pick on Claude, but, you know, Claude is what we're doing a lot of things on at the moment. So what does this actually mean? Basically, what's happening is they're lying on, well, in my opinion, they're lying on benchmarks or they're training the models specifically to do well on benchmarks. And then they're dumbing the models down after a few weeks. So what this means is Llama can come along, for example, and say, we now have the best state of the art model. Here are the numbers. Um, and then th these numbers are not necessarily accurate because the benchmarking system has been duped and they've, they've trained Llama to specifically be able to pass the benchmarks at a better rate than 355 Sonnet. Just because it passes these benchmarks doesn't mean it's necessarily more intelligent over a wide range of tasks. So what it, it's kind of frustrating because now Facebook is saying they have the best state of the art model, but in my tests, Claude Sonnet is still better. But now I want to talk about something that's really interesting and really, really strange. I have a very specific test case or use case with Harbor. Effectively, there is a part in the process where one prompt has to sort out a lot of information into a small amount of information. Kind of like I showed you earlier with the black tie um, attire for men, it's given a lot of information. It has to sort that information into relevant things for a blog, for example, or whatever it might be. Now, after some testing, what I found was GPT-40 Mini, okay, GPT-40 Mini was outperforming 3.5 Sonnet on this particular task, which is completely crazy and also should not be the case. If we actually open this here, you can see this is compared to, um, these are model evaluation scores compared to uh, Gemini Flash, Claude Haiku, GPT-3.5 Turbo, and GPT-40. And another thing as well, I tried this with GPT-40 when it first came out, and it did not perform as well as GPT-40 Mini, which according to, G according to OpenAI's own model evaluation scores that you can see here, should not be the case. So I'm really gonna be putting my tinfoil hat on with this one. I have a theory, guys. Feel free to laugh at me in the comments. I don't really care. I'm just giving you my experiences and my perspective. Now, the really interesting thing is a few weeks ago, I saw something about ChatGPT Strawberry, which again, it could be complete crap. Um, but basically what it was is it was a change in the way that uh, their models would reason and the way that their models would work. It goes back to this Q star thing. And it's almost like a whole new way of deliberating or reasoning within large language models. So what I think has happened is GBT40 Mini is their first iteration of this new reasoning system. The reason then they haven't made a huge deal about this, most likely, and this again is just me theorizing, me kind of giving my perspective, is that they don't wanna lose their hype like they, they don't want to use all of their hype on GPT-40 Mini. Most likely what, they do, what they're doing is they want to test how GPT-40 Mini does and then hit us with GPT Strawberry or GPT Q Star or GPT-5 or, you know, whatever it is that will spawn this mil these millions of YouTube videos saying that GPT has won the AI wars and blah, 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 blah. That's why I think they're doing with GPT-40 Mini, and I already think they've done this. I have tested this inside Harbor with an extremely complicated task over and over and over, about 15 times earlier, and it performed significantly better than Claude 3.5 
sonnet. Let that sink in. That should not be the case. Possibly, again, tin tinfoil hats on. Possibly because OpenAI themselves have sabotaged their own model evaluation scores with their own LLM because they don't want people to... They don't want to use the, the, this buildup of hype that they've had for the last six months about when's GPT-5 coming, when's Q-Star coming, when's Strawberry coming. They don't want to use all that on GPT-40 Mini. They want to use that on their next model, which is really going to set the standard for intelligence because it's probably going to be a GPT-4 level intelligence with this new reasoning level. So what they've done with GPT-40 Mini most likely is that it's a 3.5 level of intelligence with a new way of thinking. But this next one, whatever they come out with next, is going to be GPT-4 level thinking or intelligence, but with a new way of rationalizing, reasoning, and thinking. I'm really, really excited for what's going to be coming up in the next few weeks with the AI wars. Here's my order. This has changed just within the last few couple of weeks. Right now, I think OpenAI are probably second, but in a few weeks, they'll be back up to first. Anthropic definitely has the best SOTA, state-of-the-art model. And then Llama is third. Let us know which model you currently think is best in the comments. We would be really interested to hear what other people think. This is obviously just my experience and my opinion. Please, I think, although there is a science behind this, a lot of the science is flawed and a lot of the benchmarks are easily circumvented. <laughs> um, so yeah, just let us know because we also want to know what people think. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend and peace out. Oh, I didn't see you there. Oh, you're not subscribed. Oh, well, maybe you should subscribe then. Or don't. <laughs> Subscribe.